are back in Romans tonight, in Romans chapter 6. And here, we're reminded that Christians do not always act the way they should. Sometimes Christians just forget about their roots, where they, where they come from in regards to Christ Jesus. And that seems to be the case in Rome, or at least is the argument that Paul is putting forth because as he's been talking about in the book of Romans so far, the answer to the sin problem is grace. If you look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 20, he says, The law came in so that the transgression would, would increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So what has he said? Thank, thank God for the grace, right? That no matter how much sin there is, God's grace can take care of it. And even though the law was there and it seemed to increase the sin, God's grace increased and was able to cover it, was able to take care of it, was able to wash it away. But along with that came something. Sometimes preachers say things, you know, we, we make a statement, and then we immediately say afterwards, now don't get the wrong idea. Because that's exactly what Paul is doing right here. He's saying, as sin increased, what happened? Well, grace increased to take care of that. So what happens to some people? Well, if it doesn't matter how much sin increases, then I can just continue doing what I want to do. I can continue to sin. I can. Well, why is there really a need for me to change? Why repent? I mean, as long as I've been baptized into Christ Jesus, my sins were, were washed away, and the more I sin, isn't it better for God's grace to get greater and greater? And if that means I can sin more, then that means His grace gets greater. So why not? Let me just dive all in to sin. So that's where we come into Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Paul is trying to just not even let them think that way. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? What we'll notice here in the first three verses is really just three great questions from Paul to make us think and to make us realize where, where we started in this Christian walk, where it really all began and what that truly meant for us, not only then, but what it means for us today in the present. If, if, if my sins have been taken care of and if I've truly died in Christ, if these things have really happened, then I shouldn't be living in sin anymore. So, are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? You know, men have always looked for creative ways to continue in their sinful lifestyles. We just have. We, we've, we've said, well, I, I don't want to do it anymore, and I know I shouldn't do it, and so we, we go for a while. You know, anybody that's been an addict, somebody that's been addicted to cigarettes or addicted to alcohol or addicted to whatever it might be, they, they do their best to quit, right? And some people have. Cold turkey. Boom. I, did, I didn't need it when I started. I don't need it now. And they're able to quit it and not have to worry about it or give it a second thought. But there are people that are truly stuck and they don't know how to, to get rid of it. And just think about this with sin. You were a sin addict. It was your master. If you're an addict to cigarettes, you're an addict to drugs, you're an addict, what happens? It's become your master. But when you obeyed Christ, what were you saying? I'm switching masters. I'm no longer going to let this be my master. I'm not going to let Satan be my master anymore. I'm not going to let sin lead me down the wrong path anymore. I'm giving that up. I'm going to be living for God. But we tend to find creative ways, justify things in our minds and say, well, just this one time. I haven't taken part in years. What's the harm? And then we dive back in to sin. We come up with creative ways to hide it, but you can't hide it from God. This is one of those arguments here. If it was truly the case that we could just continue to sin on, then what was the point? 
What was the point? If, if God's saying, I don't want you to sin anymore, but I'll just, I'll just let my grace take care of it, and you can just sin all you want, what was the point? He's trying to get us to move down the right path, the right road, to make the change that truly matters. Make sure that you begin to live a righteous life. We shouldn't be sinning so that His grace may abound. His grace is more than, than enough to cover, to take care of everyone's sin, but that doesn't mean we should be increasing it whatsoever. And Paul helps us understand this even more as we move through this. Number one, in verse two, he says, May it never be. If you think it's okay to sin so that grace may abound, let me just stop you right now and say, don't even think about it. Just don't even think about it. May it never be. Now, I've had those moments as a parent where my child has come to me and they begin to ask a question. And I was observing them before, and, and it's, as they begin to ask the question, I immediately say, don't, don't even think about it. Don't even ask the question. I know what you're going to say. Sometimes it gets the response of, how do you know what I'm going to say? And sometimes it gets the response of, man, how'd you know? And that's what Paul's doing here. He says, just don't, don't even let that thought come out of your mouth. I've said it right here for you, and let me tell you, it's not a good idea. It's the wrong idea. May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Here's that second question. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? He's reminding us what happened. What, what we made a decision to do. We've gone ahead and we've killed that man of sin. We said, I'm going to die. When you think about baptism, what is it? It's, it's a death. It's a burial taking place. And we'll see that in this passage. And I'm saying, I am, I am burying that man of sin, who I used to be. The man that lived and walked and talked that way. I'm no longer going to be that man. Instead, I'm going to be this new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm going to live not with sin as my master, but with Jesus as my master. Logic would say that one who had died is not going to continue doing what the living does. If you are dead, you can no longer do what you are doing, right? So that's the argument Paul's saying. If you really died in your baptism, if you died with Christ Jesus, if you obeyed the gospel, you shouldn't be able to continue to sin because you have died. And now you need to be living with Christ Jesus in a different manner. A manner in which you are living towards righteousness. Now notice the third question in verse 3. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death? This is one of those neat, neat sections here where you, you get the understanding that you have united yourself with Christ. I want you to think about that for just a moment. How important is baptism? I mean, we'll, we'll talk about a lot of things. Baptism is where the forgiveness of sins take, takes place. That's where your sins are washed away. And we'll talk about that. That's where you receive the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.38. Those two things mentioned right there. A lot of things happen at the moment of baptism. But notice what Paul is explaining for us here. You are uniting with Jesus in death. That's a big deal. If you're not baptized, guess what? You're not uniting yourself with Christ. You need to be baptized to be united in Christ. And specifically here, united in His death. Baptized into His death. And this death is a death to sin. This is that spiritual death that is taking place. 
We're saying, I'm putting to death that old man of sin, and I am uniting myself with Christ Jesus. I am, I am dying just like Christ died. Now, I want you to pay attention to this quote. This man by the name of Owen said, There is a definite connection between the death of Christ and man's justification. Paul has said that God set forth Jesus to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. That we are justified by his blood. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. And that we have been reconciled to God through the death of his son. Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. The book is written to those who have been reconciled to God by the death of his son. All the way back, Romans chapter 1 and verse 7. Thus, Paul is describing for us how that reconciliation was realized and how that gift of righteousness was received. It is in baptism that the Christian realizes that union with the death of Christ. You receive that justification, that declaration of righteousness, the grace of God, and united in the death of Christ. It's a beautiful moment. We don't think of death being all that beautiful. But when someone is baptized, that's a beautiful moment, isn't it? It's a moment where not only those who are witnessing it, but the one specifically being baptized dies to sin, unites themselves with Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and begins to live a new life, a life avoiding sin and living towards righteousness. If you continue on here in verse 5, it says, For if we have become united with Him in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Isn't that wonderful? You start talking about the death, and it's, okay, that's really cool, but is that it? And he goes on to say, but we are also united in his resurrection. We get to take part in that as well, because we are burying, burying ourselves with him. We are going down, we are dying with him, and we are being raised with him. Now notice verse 6, because this is where we find those important important truths that I mentioned in the bulletin, these three important truths in verse 6. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. It almost seems like the Christians in Rome had forgotten what their baptism meant. Sometimes I think we forget too. Sometimes we forget, maybe because it was so long ago. Sometimes we forget because we've just become so distracted with the things around us and the things that we've began to do. But the first important truth is that we should know that our old self was crucified with him. Knowing that our old self, verse 6, was crucified with him. That old manner of life, that old way of living is gone. And when you consider the idea of being crucified, it shows a permanence, doesn't it? Crucifixion was, was the, the for sure way to kill someone. There was no getting down unless someone took you down. You were nailed to that tree and you were lifted up and you were stuck until you died. And when you think about crucifixion under the Roman rule and what they did, they, they tested. And they didn't want it to take too long. If you were taking too long to die, they'd come by and they'd break your legs. They'd make sure you couldn't raise yourself back up to make sure that you can excel and take a breath. They also made sure that you were truly dead, that you weren't faking it. 
they made sure you were dead. And if we have been crucified, that old man, that old self has been crucified with Christ, then it should be final. That old man of sin should be dead. Not only that, we should be happy. We should be happy that that old man is dead. That old man of sin that we used to be is finally dead. Because we understand that that lifestyle was in opposition to God. It was in opposition to what He required of man, what He had designed for man. When you go back to Genesis, God made sure everything was good. Even when man was alone, He said, that's not good, I'm going to make it good. And I'm going to create a helpmeet for Him. And yet man sinned and started to oppose God. If that old man of sin has been crucified, we should be happy. Because I'm no longer trying to live that way. I am forevermore trying to live like Christ. The second important truth we need to recognize is, in verse 6, we should know that our body of sin was done away with. I want you to think about this for a moment. In order that our body of sin might be done away with. When, when a body dies... What do we do with it? Do we hold on to it? Somebody once said, Behold, it stinketh. Right? If you keep a dead body around, what's going to happen? It's going to start stinking up the joint. That's not what we do. We bury the bodies. We might cremate the bodies. We get rid of the bodies because it's not good to keep it around. And so that body of sin was done away with. I'd rather not keep that dead body around. Now think about this for a moment. You know, zombies have been really big you know, in, in the entertainment industry over the last number of years. If you start living like that old man of sin, what are you, what are you doing? It's like you're raising him from the dead. You're this zombie walking around, and you stink. And you know why you stink? Because you're covered in filth the stench of sin. Why then would we want to keep that old body around? The old self should be taken away, buried in that watery grave, the grave of baptism, and a new body has risen up in Christ Jesus. The third important truth we need to recognize here in verse 6 is we should know that we are no longer to be slaves to sin. Why return to the old taskmaster? We hated him anyway. But isn't it interesting that we tend to go back? Think about the Israelites way back in Egyptian bondage, right? They had their taskmasters and life wasn't great and they were, they were happy to, to be freed from that old taskmaster. They, they were happy to be freed and to go along with Moses and with God and to no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. But after a little while, it, well, I just, I like that I was freed, but I knew how to live, right? I, I was comfortable. I was, things were going okay. Maybe we start to forget how bad it was. Maybe we start thinking about how good we thought we had it. And they started to complain and murmur to God, didn't they? Same thing happens to us. We, we want to, at times, go back to the old taskmaster. You know, I, I love living for you, God. I, I, I enjoy pleasing you, and I want to live right. I really do. But when I did this, it was really fun. I remember how much fun. Maybe it wasn't necessarily that it was so much fun, but you know, I, had, I had some friends. I had people that, that I could talk to about anything. And you start to think about some of these things that that old man of sin enjoyed that the old taskmaster, no matter how terrible it was, 
for whatever reason you got conditioned to it and you thought that that was the way in which to live and so sometimes we just go back even the jews the jews that obeyed christ the jews that were baptized into christ jesus what were they trying to do to gentile christians well we know that christ died for you too but before you can really receive all the benefits of jesus you need to be circumcised you need to come through the old taskmaster and before you can really move into Christ. For whatever reason, mankind has this, this way of trying to get back to things that weren't good to begin with. Because we're comfortable with it. Because it what, it's what we, we grew up with. Whatever it might be. But we shouldn't want to go back to the old taskmaster we hated him anyway. Think about that. If it was sin, we shouldn't desire it anymore. It's important to see what we were. In fact, we were slaves to sin. We obeyed a master that only wanted our demise. Only desired our destruction. That's all Satan desires for you. And if you continue to go back to that taskmaster, you will be destroyed. You will lose. You will not gain the victory in Christ Jesus if you do not choose him to be your master. If you continue on through a number of these other verses, verse 7, for he who has, who has died is freed from sin. And when, when you die, whatever agreement you had with anybody, that's done and over with, right? Right? That, that's, that's taken care of. Verse 8, Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Alright, we've died with Christ, we've been buried with Him in baptism. Now that we've risen up, we get to live with Him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again, death no longer is master over Him. For the death that He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Now, Christ being the example in that, notice what Paul does in verse 11. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Paul said God's grace is more than abundant. It, it, it just keeps on growing to take care of the sin. But don't let, that, don't let that make you think you should continue sinning just because God's grace can take care of it. If you continue sinning, it's like you didn't even change masters. It's like the baptism where you were supposed to have died didn't even take place because you continued to go back to that old taskmaster. And instead of living to God, you're dying in sin. Therefore, verse 12, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Do not obey its lusts. Instead, live to God. Follow the example of your new master, Jesus Christ, who in verse 10, the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. We need to be doing the same. Living to God. Those are some great questions that Paul puts forth in Romans chapter 6. And he's given us some great truths in regards to those questions to help us understand if we've forgotten what actually has taken place in baptism, especially in regard to the burial, to the death that has taken place. What did I die to? I died to sin once for all. Just like Jesus. I don't need to go back to that. 
Instead, I need to be living for God. If you're here this evening and you're ready to start living for God, you have not been buried with Jesus in baptism and you're ready to do that this evening, the opportunity is for you to do that. Many of us here have taken part. We have been buried in baptism. We were buried with Christ. We died to sin. But if you've started going back to that old taskmaster, if you've started taking part in sin again, and you know you shouldn't, but you need some help, you need some encouragement, that's what we're here for. Don't think that your only friends were the friends that sinned with you. Understand that you gained a whole new family, a whole new set of friends in Christ Jesus that is here to pray with you, to walk alongside you, to hold you up when it doesn't seem like you can walk. We're here for you. Come forward while we stand and while we sing.